Start. But nowadays there's a lot of SMEs coming, and there's a lot of SMEs coming into into our region. But why not we develop our own local local concept in product, in food, in uh, in, in services, you know? Uh, and we have a big market. Nowadays, if you go to any shopping mall, uh, you'll find a number of, of shops or of products which we, we, we never knew before. Before we knew big, big franchising, but nowadays, uh, you know, um, new concepts <coughs> which could be, uh, yeah, or be or better branded or better developed, they can access into other markets. <coughs> uh, we had a very good experience because few years back we started helping and supporting what's called LFA, the Lebanese Franchise Association. It's one of its fairest in, in the region, uh, you know. <coughs> we help them, actually. We, we <coughs> organized the first franchising uh, conference about six, seven years back, or eight years back in Bahrain. You know, and we brought a number of players from, from the region uh, and to see how we can develop that setup. And it has been picked by the Lebanese group. Uh, they started with three concepts. Today they have about 300, yes, yes, 90 something concepts of franchising. They started only with three, but then when they brought, they brought all the big players with the small players, you know, like Pachi, Profai, Gasper, uh, Gasper Gambini, and and so many others, you know. Little by little, it became uh, one of the strongest franchise uh, association in, in the whole region, and we work with them in, uh, in uh, establishing what we call FIM, Franchise Association of the Middle East. And Franchise Association of the Middle East, we have uh, forwarded to the MENA OCD Investment Center to be in charge of that, of that association. Because you realize uh, that franchising needs partnership, or franchising needs uh, outside borders than only the country you're walking in. So from the beginning, we saw that to develop that regional institutions so that we can have a regional market, you know, from Morocco <coughs> to Bahrain. But then this is our stretch. Then we can also take some African African countries because they're part of also of our future future markets. Because in Franchise your United markets is the most important setup. Now what are we doing? We're helping you, we're equipping you on how from an idea that it could be developed into a concept how you can go through the franchising process. This is why you would see uh, my friend Nicola and me have been brainstorming several times I have to travel to Beirut to discuss with him the details of the setup in order to bring a real, simple, friendly toolkit. You can digest it and then of course, every one of you, he will bring it on his own. Of course, we have the consultancy firm, which is good if they pick it then it will be quite good for them because this is the way, you know, here we work in the country through Tamkin, you know, consultancy firm provides support to the, to the entrepreneur, startup or, or existing. Access to finance, you have uh, one of the good counterparts is the Bahrain Development Bank and of course again Tamkin. But as I said, this is the first group, then we have to, to develop other groups, you know, that to have a good, good market. And then also good news for you, I think also you can support other countries in the region, you know, especially the consultancy firms. You know, you can extend your support to other countries, you know, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, because all of this is needed in the, in, in the region. And so far, most of the most of the experts in franchising they are coming from abroad, and it's quite costly. You say that for me, Hashem? Hmm? <laughs> Sorry. You say that for me? Yes. <laughs> It's quite costly when you develop the franchise itself. Now, you're having the first basics, how to develop a franchise. But then to take an idea to the franchise, it's costly, mm. you know? But to do that, there's a lot to, lot to be done, you see. You're going to be part of that. And the partnership is important. One person cannot do it, even in developing from an idea to a franchise. Because you need branding, you need design, you need legal, you know. Then you go to access to finance. To close. You need also access to finance. This is why the support has to be coming from financial institutions. And I hope also, we have been discussing this with Tamkin, that Tamkin should bring the services 
of franchising as part of their as part of their support activities because Turkey provides a lot of support for entrepreneurs through consultancy firms. But then when they are ready, they need the funding for sure. Because for they, sure. They, they need to develop the corporate image. And this is the most important part you see when you come to the toolkit. When you're ready, you have to start right. Yes. To start right, you need access to finance. Okay? Exactly. <clears throat> because then you'll develop the first one, you develop the second one, you develop the second one. You need the cash flow. If you don't have the cash flow behind you, you know, whatever you do, it wouldn't be good that maybe even your idea could be taken by someone else, you know, and this is very, very common in, in our region. So, <clears throat> you know, having, uh, you know, Mr. Nicholas here, I think, is a well uh, knowledgeable uh, expert in that field, he's, he's, very, he's a practitioner, you know, he's not, he's not uh, someone who comes from theory, he's a practitioner himself, and he knows the region quite well. I've been working in Saudi Arabia, I've been working in Syria. Now for a long time he's working in, in Lebanon, you know, helping a number of Lebanese companies to develop their local franchise or even bringing, you know, franchise, one and medium franchise to the region. So uh, you realize the, this, this toolkit which we are developing in support of the Islamic Development Bank. The Islamic Development Bank has been supporting us to develop this toolkit. But you'll find it is a quite practical toolkit, and uh, we, we have brought the expert, you know, the, the expert who have developed and drafted this. So in the coming five days, I think you will you will share the knowledge, uh, we will share the experience with you, and then we can plan in the future how we we develop this as a platform, as a one team to develop that program in Lebanon. And Nicholas will be also with us. Is not going just to leave us because we are going to work with him in bringing five, seven concepts for you to start knowing it. Then he will be our expert, inshallah, in helping future uh, setups because also even the consultancy firm, you need to work with him. Even if you are going to bring the business at the beginning, you have to work with him to help you in really designing and bringing from an idea uh, to a concept. Um, I just, you know, I don't know if you have been introduced to Mrs. Nawal. I was about to. Uh, she's one of our, our, our first tests on how we can develop a local concept into, into, into franchise. I stop here and I will be sitting with you here for some time also to go on the discussion. Merci beaucoup, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Doctor Hashem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a seat. Mr. Ali. Yes, bonjour. bonjour. Uh, my name is Ali Mazdoub. Uh, I work for the Client Development Bank along with uh, Ahmed Sept. I work in the Development Services Division. Okay. So we support uh, SMEs in terms of establishing their businesses, giving them a place to, you know, we, have, we run a few incubators. Um, there's coaching, there's training, there's funding. Um, a lot of these programs are along with Tempkin as well. Uh, so, you know, just like Tim Keen and a lot of people here, we also want to incorporate franchising as one of the support services for our uh, clients. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, businesses establish, uh, but then, you know, take it into the next stage, which is franchising, exporting, moving to other regions. So this is why we want to incorporate, so, you know. Well, it's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Nawal. Yeah, I'm Nawal Sabah. Uh, I have a business since 1989, and I have a vision and a dream. I want to see my name outside this country. I like the word vis vision, because I will talk to you more about that, but the, the, the word vision is very, very important. Yes, and uh, um, I need your help to franchise my business. Um, I have flowers, chocolates, and I introduce now late, lately uh, like a tune or like a cafe within my business. The, the concept is the flower and chocolate, and the cafe I want to start is the menu will be attached to the flower and the chocolate, so the chocolate will be like the salad with chocolate sauce, the flower, uh, the sandwich with flour, edible flour. I want to add this concept to the menu to make it a one concept of flour and chocolate shop. So, very interesting, and not to flate you, 
uh, Madame Nawal is speaking about something very interesting. It's what we call in franchising differentiation. I mean, this is all the story. She's telling us, I will create something new. I want to put chocolate in all my activities and to make something special with a high differentiation uh, positioning. This is very important. I will explain you how in franchising business model your, your, your franchise is depending on the differentiation of your business. Differentiation, what does it mean? I mean if you are telling me today I'm going to create a restaurant which sells burgers, I can tell you, yes, you can, <coughs> but there are a few thousands people who had this idea before. Some of them are very talented, uh, more than talented. I mean, you have big players in the, in the burger industry. And if you want to create a burger restaurant, you can. But if you want to success, you have to add a differentiation inside the concept. OK? Which is the most difficult thing, uh, thing by the way. Because differentiation, it's, easy, it's a word easy to pronounce. But create a differentiation inside your concept is the most difficult. And this is, this is a big story. And you need, as Dr. Hashem said, a chain. You are not alone, you know, uh, thinking, how oh, can I differentiate my concept? It's, uh, coll it's intelligence collective, collective uh, cleverness, you know. You have to have, uh, to, to be helped by a team. So, as I told you, I will tackle, you know, and uh, be, uh, beside, you know, the franchise toolkits that I advise you to have a look, at least the outline, to ask me questions on a daily basis, we will tackle five modules that I choose uh, within those five days. The most important, according to me, is the module that we, tackled, that we will tackle today, which is named Operation Manuals. Okay, this is the most important, according to me. Why? Because Operation Manuals are the concretization of your know-how that you will transfer to your franchisee. So this module is very important. Tomorrow, second module, how to sell your franchise. Im also important. You have a great franchise. If you cannot sell it, use less. Third module, leadership and franchising. You as franchisor, you are a leader. Fourth module, brand management and franchising. What is a brand? I told you. Fifth module, the last day, uh, franchising and innovation. OK? So really, have a look at your franchise toolkit uh, this evening at home. See the outline. I don't ask you to read it, you know, en integralité. But at least tomorrow, tell me, Nicola, there is a page uh, 50, something. Can you explain? Can you precise? Can you? I think it would be very interesting uh, to discuss those issues together. So let's start with operation manuals. So someone. Among you know what is operation manual? So, what is it? What is an operation manual? And, and by the way, is there only one term to appoint a book that you deliver to your franchisee? It's a guide. That's a guide? Step by step. Okay. Uh, how to do things. Can yes, you know how to do things. Oh, so, how. let's precise the vocabulary. Normally, there is a word, you call it operation manuals, which is clear, you know, operation, how to do the things, and manual. Procedure, process. <coughs> but this word is a generic word, you know, because you can have operation manual. You have a guide of specification. You can have specification. So, uh, irrespective of the name which is chosen. In France, we call it, uh, by the way, the Bible. I mean, uh, it's a Bible. I mean, it's, you cannot change a, a comma or a dot, you know. We call it like that in the jargon franchise. I mean, this is the key element of your franchise. And uh, legally, I will explain you, it's the proof that you delivered effectively an out to your franchisee. So 
No joke. I will explain you. I mean, when you deliver your your books, normally you have many books, we will see it. You, you, when you give, when you sign the agreement with your franchisee, and when you give the, for sure it's digital now, huh? it's a CD, or you give your eight or nine or ten books, be careful. Z this is your ID as a franchisor. Huh? You give that to your franchisee, your franchisee, I won't enter into legal uh, debates, but your franchisee can sue you based on that. <laughs> because what, what, all the content of your operation manuals are compulsory, uh, must be compulsory uh, carried out. I mean, you, you, all what is written in it, it has to be tested, proven, and you have you as a franchisor to be able to deliver to your franchisee. So don't write things in your operation manuals that you are not able to deliver. <laughs> Why? Because if there is a problem, your franchisee can go to court to sue you and to say, OK, he gave me a nice operation manual. Page 37, he told me that blah, 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 blah. And he's not able to do it. So according to that, I sue the franchisor. So really, it's for this reason, I told you, is the most important module. Why? Because of the content, because as we will see, the operation manual has a summary and the synthesis of your know-how. But also, it, it can be a tool, we will see, to advertise your franchise, but also to have problems. <laughs> so no, no bluff. It's not poker here. You write things in your operation manual, and you say, uh, I wrote it. And uh, take the, it's nice. The book is very uh, big. Uh, I'm very serious because there is 1,000 pages. This is not the issue. Uh, well, Americans, they developed a lot the, the concept of operation manual with big, big books. <coughs> As I told you, it's a tradition in, in, in Western countries and in the USA and Canada. But I would say that it's not the quantity, it's the quality. <laughs> It's no need to make a book of 1,000 pages. How to put the key? You know, once I was reading uh, an operation manual of a very famous brand. I cannot tell you the name because it's secret. Huh? I didn't bring, uh, by the way, operation manual with me because it's secret. I don't have me operation manual on my. I, I help people to do it, I, but I cannot have with me, you know, even for a client. It's secret. I mean, it's delivered only to a franchisee. But once I was reading an operation manual from an American brand, they tell you the employee has to take the key and to put it in the locksmith and to turn. <laughs> you know, in case of you take the key and uh, I don't know, maybe you try to phone your, your friend with the key, you know? I mean, Quality procedure manuals is always asking you know, the details. Yes. Okay, so that's people learning how to put. You're, you're, you're right. You're right, but sometimes you know it reaches a point that it's against common sense. I mean, you say, I have to open the, the shutters in the morning, you put the key, you turn on the right. Anyway, this is very cultural, you know. It's typically uh, North American. I mean, you will never see that in a French operation manual, for instance. I mean, you open the shop and, OK, check the alarm system, check, OK. But they won't tell you how to turn the, the key in the shutters. Anyway, this is a cultural thing, very important. So why did I put this picture? Not because I am a fan of sewing, huh? and not because you will attend the sewing training. It's because uh, Saint-Ger, you know, you know the brand in the region or not? Yes. So you know it? Uh, so explain me. Yeah, yeah, yes. In France, the same. Yeah, yes. Saint Ger. So, can someone know the history of the brand? Even in the region, really, I didn't know that. Saint Ger, yeah. So you know the history of Saint Ger or not? The history, the real history. So, done. 
but the real history. Isaac Singer, he was a lawyer, by the way. Perhaps there is a link you know, between franchising and, and legal. He was a lawyer in New York in 1850. So as I told you, you know, franchising business model is not, uh, is not uh, new. And at the same time, it is new. <coughs> in 1850, he was a lawyer. He decided to, to stop his career of advocate. And uh, he had the idea to create a brand for sewing machine and to license the machines to licenses. I will explain you the difference, by the way, between licensee and franchise, because there is a confusion. Uh, he decided to stop his advocate career, move to a sewing machine business. And he had the idea to, to grant concessions and territories to licenses, renting them and selling them the thread, the machines, the cotton, with an exclusivity of supplier. I mean, uh, Mr. Saint-Jean was the, executive, the exclusive supplier. And with the commitment to supply to Mr. Saint-Jean uh, in, in uh, exchange of royalties. Okay? It was the first, we say, I mean, that Mr. Saint-Jean was the first uh, inventor of franchising. It was in New York, so in 1850. So as you can see, franchising was invented by uh, Americans, by US. They are still leaders in this business, as you can see. I mean, in USA, franchising for a business owner is very logical, you know. I have a business, I'm successful, I franchise. You know, it's no, <laughs> no philosophic debate. It works in. I want to penetrate uh, USA market. I want to create uh, 200 shops. This is the American mentality. You go in France. In France, by the way, you have more than 1,000 network eh, in franchising. So as I told you, it's not a joke. It's the second country in the world for franchising. But in France, as a pity, uh, you have great concepts. They are working very well. In Italy also, if you, some of you know Italy. You have great concepts, fashion in FMB, but people, they don't want to franchise. OK, I have my business. I make my money, and that's all. So difference of culture. And, and you see it for me, really, between Europe and USA, the approach regarding franchising is one of the big difference, I mean, in business-wise, between Europe and USA. When in Europe people, they will hesitate before franchising. Oh, it will cost me money. It will take time. I will have problems, blah, 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 blah. In America, let's franchise. I have two shops, three shops, go. Difference of mentality. So Saint-Ger, and I put that, but for sure everybody knows it. <coughs> uh, McDonald's as a symbol, I would like to say, of franchising, even if they don't, if, if the number one in terms of units, it's not McDonald's, it's Subway. Huh? Subway, they have more than uh, 17,000 of units. And uh, McDo is not the first at all. But I mean, McDonald's, what is interesting in McDonald's, I will explain you that in two details in the module of innovation, that uh, McDonald's is the best, one of the best, to produce burgers, as I told you. Either we like it or not, that's not the issue. I mean, they are, I think, one of the best companies in the world to produce burgers. Uh, their, the origin of their competitive advantage, as we say in, in business, is based on operations. I repeat, because you have four, four origins of a competitive advantage. I will speak to you Friday on this issue. But they are very talented on operation. They created a competitive advantage. And now McDonald's, uh, they are supposed to be the, the best brand to produce burgers in the world. Ah, now let's enter into definition. You know, I advise you, and you know that <coughs> as me, before tackling a topic 
always revert to the definition, definition by a, a solid source. I mean, uh, be careful, by the way, about Wikipedia and all that. I mean, you want a definition about franchising, go on Google, okay, but go on legal, legal uh, business, uh, legal website or franchising website. Eh? Be careful about uh, <coughs> Wikipedia. Definition, Operational is a book tape document provided by the franchisor. Some of you, future some of you, that typically contain much of the information a franchisee needs to know in order to establish and operate a franchise-based business. So it's a book or many books. Uh, we will see after of many books. And by the way, once again, this is not the number of books. Huh? Some people, they will tell you uh, seven books, other eight, other nine. Irrelevant. The operations manuals must summarize the complete know-how that you will deliver to your franchisee. This is the story. I mean, you have a goal. When, when I give you the operation manual, you're a franchisee, I'm a franchisor, you sign, I take the check, <coughs> I give you the operation manual. Normally, me as franchisor, I must give you all the know how, I mean, all the processes of the tips, all my experience, all my knowledge, must be written in this document to enable you to create, to implement the duplication. What is a duplication? Basics of the franchising. If I am selling you my franchise as a franchisor, assumption my, my concept was successful, you know? I, can, I cannot. I can, but it's risky for me. But if I am franchisor, assumptions that my business was successful because I don't normally if I am honest if I'm a, if I am an honest person I don't franchise bad business a business uh, that has bankrupt six months after the opening theoretically you cannot franchise it so now how definition of the now how operation manual you know in your brain you have to link it directly to one word know how operation manual equal know how when you transfer your operation manual, you transfer a tool to enable your franchisee to get your know-how. This is the story. And it has to be written, for sure, <coughs> to refer. I mean, the franchisee, every time he will have a difficulty, he has to refer to the operation manual. I have a problem in this field. Let's see at the operation manual. Normally, if your operation manual is well done, the solution at your question is inside the operation manual. Okay, you cannot answer to all questions in an operation manual. You know, you, alway, you always have a gap. But nine times out of ten, normally your operation manual must answer to your question. So now how there is a definition, you know, of the European Code of Ethics for Franchising. <coughs> Again, uh, the source is the European Code of Ethics for Franchising. Know-how means a body of non-patented practical information resulting from experience. <coughs> experience. So, can I franchise my business after opening my first unit one month after? If I open my business today, can I start franchising after one month? No. Why? You know? It has to be tested, testing by the franchisor. Tested and proven. It's written in the franchise toolkit at the beginning. Okay. The concept that you want to franchise has to be previously tested. The test must not have to be with your first franchisee. <laughs> Sometimes there is a problem at this stage. Okay, my concept is average. I start franchising and I will see. No, you won't see. <laughs> yes, you will see that you will burn your brand. Be careful, I open a bracket. As Dr. Hashem told you, I've been here for 15 years in the region. This region geographically is big. 
but in fact small. Why? Because everybody knows everybody. If you open a brand in Beirut, in Dubai, in Bahrain, and if there is a failure, your brand is burned, finished. You won't have a second chance to relaunch your business. And it happened to me with French brands, by the way. <coughs> I have two clients. They tried to come in Lebanon a few years ago with FMB concept, with restaurant, a very nice brand. After 10 years, they don't manage to come back in Lebanon, even in Dubai. When I meet potential franchisees, they told me they opened 10 years ago and they closed 10 years after. 10 years after. And it's an it's, uh, experience, huh? it's not a... Uh, they opened, they opened over there and there was a problem, I remember, it was 10 years ago. And my French client was very upset. He told me, how oh, come, Nicolas, it was 10 years ago? Yes, 10 years ago, but <laughs> you opened and you closed. <laughs> People have, uh, have memory. So don't use your first franchisee as a test. I open with my first franchisee, I will see. No. Take more time. Wait for six months. Open six months later, one year later. Make a test. Make a scratch test with, with your, your team, with your consultant, with whatever. Make a simulation. Tomorrow, if I open a franchise, if I grant the right for a franchise, <coughs> I am ready to, to support my franchisee because the main business in franchising is the link between the franchise fees that you will ask for your franchisee and the support that you will get. I explain. Six months ago, I was with a, a client in Lebanon. He told me, okay, I want this amount of franchise fees per unit for my clients. I found someone interested. He told me, oh, Nicola, it's a little bit high as a franchise fees per unit. I answer to this guy, listen to me. Don't focus on the amount of the franchises. Look at the support that you will really benefit. You, you always have to make the balance between the franchise fees and the support that you will deliver. If you ask for high franchise fees, and I recommend that to you, and I will explain you why, because there is a reason. It's not cash uh, reason, by the way. Okay? You have to deliver accordingly high support. You have to make the, yes. You cannot ask a high amount for the franchise fees per unit and to tell to your franchisee after, okay, I sold you the use of the brand name and bye-bye. Uh, do it on your own. No. You have to correlate franchise fees level and support. If you deliver a support that matches the level of your franchise fees, there will be no reproach. And people, they will pay as they won't regret to have paid. It's very important. <coughs> so, know how? Key, key word, you know, to be linked with operation manual. And the now is there are three characteristics, secret, substantial, and identified. So, the now is secret. What does it mean, secret? Secret the reason why I don't have operation manual with me, with the brand names. Normally, uh, an operation manual, it has a recipe of kitchen with a grand chef in France. You know, you know a grand chef in France, he, he puts some recipes on internet, on his website, as Alain Ducasse, you know, he puts some recipes to make marketing. But most of his recipes are secret. <laughs> he doesn't give his recipe on the net. He keeps his recipe in his pocket. If you go to Plaza Athene in Paris, you will taste uh, a plate, a dish from Alain Ducasse. But you have to go to Paris to the Plaza Athene. You won't find the recipe on the internet. Franchising is the same. I have a recipe to success. I am franchisor. I am selling you a recipe to success. I want to keep it for me. I will sell it to you, but I don't want to disclose it. So this is very important. Uh, that's why you know operation manual, again, don't have to be uh, distributed to everybody and to be disclosed and blah, blah, and blah, blah. 
operation manual, you have it at your office. You have a CD with a copy. It can be used by the brand manager, for sure by the operation manager. And that's all. It's not a public document, operation manuals. But we ha I have a question. Like, uh, we have a manager, and he has all the secrets, and then, then he left. Look, interesting question. To be frank with you, some people think that they can uh, grab and uh, they can embody all the know-how of a brand, being, for instance, a brand manager or manager, operation manager. But in fact, you know, in franchising, you speak about system and about a team. <coughs> if, if one manager can leave your company and can damage your brain and duplicate everything from you, it means that there is a, a mistake from you. Because it's you know, franchising, and we will see that into detail, when you have a concept. Concept is not based on a person and even based on a book to be to be sharp. If you are telling me someone left and uh, he, he, he collapsed my business, it means that there was no system in your company. No, he, he's not collapsing, but he's taking the system. So after, it's a legal issue. If you can prove that the person took the info and duplicated it, uh, after it's a legal issue, you know, but you have to prove, you have to prove it. But normally when you have a strong business, Okay, you have even a key employee is leaving you. You will create uh, Nawal flowers with another name. Will he be stronger than you? I don't think. Because you, you are the, what we, we, I will explain you on Thursday, you are the brand endorser. I mean, in your case, for instance, you are Nawal, Nawal flowers. Me, Nicola, I'm leaving you. I create uh, Nicola's flowers. I am legitimate. Okay, perhaps I will grab you some clients, okay? But the brand name, it's you. Yes, but, but I mean, uh, you, you are now wildflowers, for sure. And it happens a lot. In Lebanon also, there are specialists for that. Huh? When someone has a successful concept, uh, and most of the time, I come to the Gulf. I take the idea, I come to the Gulf. It's clear. No, it's clear. When you go to wedding, so it is not only the product or, or the chocolate itself, it's the brand that's exactly. attached to it. Similar when it's come to Starbucks, white people don't have Starbucks. Exactly. Their name. You can buy coffee from any other, but it's the prestigious thing. Is it, it is what we call the symbolic value. Exactly. I, w I will speak, I will tackle this issue on Thursday. Uh, giving you a, ni a nice course about this issue. Uh, you know the functional value of a brand, you know, I, I'm, I'm drinking uh, Al Ain uh, symbolic value and your involvement